Hello, everyone. This is Yihua from Michigan State University. Today, I will introduce our recent work that is accepted to NeurIPS 2022. In this work, we peer into the model pruning task from the perspective of bilevel optimization theory. And we propose a new pruning algorithm that can achieve performance as good as iterative magnitude pruning and as fast as the one-shot pruning. This work is also credit to all my co-authors shown in this slide. You can check out our paper and GitHub repo by scanning the QR codes shown in this slide. Let's get started. The last decade has witnessed a great success in machine learning and artificial intelligence. In the meantime, the model has become larger and larger with more and more data for increasingly complicated algorithms. Therefore, efficient artificial intelligence has emerged as an important research goal and direction. Principled approaches have been proposed for different parts of the machine learning pipeline. For example, for the data used for training, we have the data condensation technique to improve the data efficiency. During training, more scalable algorithms are also studied to accelerate the training process. For the model itself, model pruning is one of the mostly studied branch and has received increasing attention this year. It is also the focus of this work. Model pruning has demonstrated its effectiveness in many areas. It can reduce the model size, improve model generalization by removing redundant parameters. Besides, it can also benefit the model in terms of adversarial robustness, out of distribution generalization, transfer learning, and so on and so forth. It is a very useful technique but designing efficient and powerful pruning method is still very challenging. Among the many powerful pruning methods, we can never miss one of the most significant and popular methods called iterative magnitude pruning, or in short, we call IMP. As its name suggests, the working mode of IMP is in an iterative manner and uh, uh, with several pruning retraining runs. It starts from some random model initializations, and for one round, it starts from a model delivered by the last round. After training the model for several epochs, it prunes a small portion of the parameters with the least magnitudes. By repeating such procedure round by round, IMP iteratively reach the target sparsity level by removing the uh, model parameters with an exponentially decaying pruning ratio, just as the illustration shows here. Okay, now the question is, why is IMP so important? Uh, IMP has two strengths. Firstly, IMP is known to have the ability to find the sparse subnet subnetworks that can match or even outperform the well-trained dense networks. Secondly, some of the subnetworks can reach extremely sparse level without any performance loss. As illustrated by the lottery ticket hypothesis paper, the architecture of such subnetworks are termed the winning tickets. <laughs> Although IMP is very powerful and effective in terms of finding winning tickets, it still suffers from high computational cost. The reason is, to reach the target sparsity level, as I mentioned before, IMP has to decay its pruning ratio exponentially with respect to its pruning round to ensure the best performance. Therefore, for some extreme sparsity scenarios, uh, IMP can take much more time even than training a dense model from scratch. To mitigate the high computational cost of IMP, researchers also propose some one-shot pruning methods. Namely, the model is pruned to the target sparsity level only one time based on a pre-trained model or models with some random initializations. The former is often called the one-shot magnitude pruning, or in short, we call OMP, and the latter is termed the initialization-based pruning methods. Here, as you can see, the model just goes through uh, one pruning operation, and then the sparse model with the desired sparsity level can be delivered. The advantage of the one-shot pruning method lies in its sparsity agnostic time consumption. Compared to IMP, this is a very desirable attribute since the for the extreme sparsity now, it does not need any additional cost. 
However, okay, there's always a however. However, there is no free lunch. Uh, the less time consumption achieved by the one-shot pruning methods is always treated with sacrifice on the performance of the fund subnetworks. Therefore, existing pruning methods have reached an awkward dilemma over choosing between the effective methods and the efficient methods. The figures here showing this page are a preliminary study comparing the accuracy of the sparse networks and the time consumption uh, between the IMP and the recent one-shot pruning methods. Here, as you can see, in terms of performance, IMP um, indeed does a better job than any other methods with no doubt. It can find a winning ticket with a sparsity level of even 70% with ResNet 20S on CIFAR 10, while its one-shot counterparts can hardly find any winning tickets with very large pruning ratios. While on the other hand, the time consumption of IMP also increases exponentially as the pruning ratio increases. The sparsest winning tickets found by IMP is at a cost of three times more than its one-shot based rivals in the same setting. Therefore, we raise this question with the hope of if developing a pruning method that can achieve the high performance like IMP while consuming less time like OMP. Uh, like one-shot pruning methods. And we ask us this question from the algorithmic foundation perspective, can we advance the optimization basis of the pruning problem to accomplish this goal? The solution we provided to this problem is through bilevel optimization theory. We first reformulate the model pruning task into a bilevel optimization problem where the upper level problem optimizes the pruning mask for the model and the lower level problem retrains the model with the fixed mask. The benefits from this bilevel formulation are twofold. Firstly, we now have the flexibility to use mismatched pruning and retraining objectives. For example, we can use mismatched data batch for the upper and the lower level problem. This is actually very important because it is known to be able to boost the generalization of the found mask. Secondly, bilevel optimization enables us to explicitly optimize the coupling between the model parameters and the pruning mask through what we call the implicit gradient-based optimization routine. Here, I need to give a little heads up on the so-called implicit gradient. The implicit gradient, denoted as IG in this formulation, um, derives from the implicit function theory. When we ca calculate the gradient of the upper level variable, it refers to the gradient of the lower level solutions with respect to the upper level variable, which is often regarded as a fingerprint of the bilevel optimization problem. Therefore, when we do the gradient descent on the upper level, we have to take into consideration the implicit gradient. Namely, we have to uh, take care of the gradient flow from the lower level back to the upper level problem. However, in most cases, implicit gradient is very tricky to calculate. We can actually write down its analytical closed form solution here. And you can see it involves the second order derivative as well as the matrix inversion. Well, very luckily in our pruning scenario, note that the upper level and lower level variables are very uh, are always combined as a bilinear variable. We can leverage these bilinear properties and come up with a closed form the implicit gradient solution requiring only the first order derivative. You can find the very detailed derivation in our paper, but here I just want to stress that this is also the reason why uh, our later proposed BIP algorithm is a purely first order algorithm. Now we propose our bilevel pruning algorithm, in short, we call BIP. We adopt the alternating optimization procedure by updating the lower level and upper level variables in turn, step by step. Here is an illustration of how the BIP algorithm works. We start from a pruned uh, with a pre-trained dense model and some mask initialization. First, for the lower level, we use the stochastic gradient descent to update the model parameter with the fixed mask. 
And for the upper level, it is a little bit more complicated as the mask is supposed to contain either zero or one, representing whether a parameter should be removed or retained. The nature of this discrete, discrete optimization makes the whole optimization procedure very difficult. Therefore, we first relax the binary masking variables to continuous masking scores, which can be updated with auto differentiation in the backward path. At the forward path, we project it onto the discrete constraint using the hard thresholding, where the top key elements are set to ones and the others set to zeros. Thus, we summarize our upper level update as a stochastic projected gradient descent, or in short, we here term the SPGD. By repeating this process for several epochs, we can finally find a pruned model with the targeted sparsity level. In the end, we stress that we utilize different data batches for the two consecutive lower and upper level updates. For experiments, we conduct extensive experiments on four data sets, namely CIFA-10, CIFA-100, TinyImageNet, and ImageNet. We consider a wide range of methods as baseline, such as IMP, the one-shot magnitude pruning OMP, and Hydra, which is also a recently proposed optimization-based method, uh, and other initialization-based pruning methods such as GRASP, SNP, SYNFLOW, and PROSPRUM. We consider three different pruning settings, namely the unstructured pruning setting, the structured filter-wise pruning, and the structured channel-wise pruning. These three settings consider model pruning with different pruning units, uh, namely the model parameter as the smallest uh, pruning unit for the unstructured pruning, the model filter as the pruning unit for the filter-wise pruning, and of course the model channel as the pruning unit for the channel-wise pruning. Please find more explanations and also illustrations in the paper and our appendices. To compare different methods, we evaluated the test accuracy of the farmed some networks, as well as the time consumption used to find such sub-networks with the given sparsity level. Well, first of all, I will show you the unstructured pruning trajectory. Here it means the given, uh, it, it is given by the test accuracy uh, of the found sum networks versus the pruning ratio of BIP and other baseline methods in eight model dataset setups. In each subfigure, here we show the performance of the subnetworks found by different methods with increasing pruning ratios. Uh, the performance of the dense model is denoted in the black dotted line and the best winning tickets in each setting is denoted with the uh, green dotted line here. As you can see, BIP outperforms its baselines in nearly all the settings and also finds the sparsest winning tickets nearly every time. For some settings like CIFA-10 with the model VGG-16, BIP is even capable of finding uh, the winning tickets with pruning ratio over 90%. Note in the ImageNet with ResNet-50 model, set, uh, model setting, we only compare BIP with our strongest baseline IMP due to the computational constraints. So some takeaways from this uh, first series of experiments that BIP finds the best and the sparsest winning tickets nearly in, uh, in all the cases. Although here I only show you the results in the unstructured pruning, you can always find the similar conclusion uh, from the structured pruning as well. Next, we show the high efficiency of the BIP compared to the state of the art IMP methods. As we have longed for, BIP consumes sparsity agnostic time consumptions, just like the one-shot pruning methods. Well, in this case study with the CIFA-10 on ResNet 18, BIP is seven times faster than the MP when we compare the time consumption used to find the uh, corresponding sparsest winning tickets. Note that the BIP spent much less time while finding the sparser winning tickets. Finally, we need to mention that we have plenty of experimental results showing the rewinding effect of BIP, the influence from the lower level steps, and the significance of the implicit gradient term. We also show uh, the convergence behavior of the upper and lower level problem respectively. As we stressed before, 
uh, we have more results on the two structure pruning settings. If you are interested, please feel free to check out our paper. Um, thank you for watching this video in the end. And we, uh, you can find the paper and the repository by scanning these QR codes. You can also email me if you have any questions. Uh, again, this is a joint work from the Michigan State University, IBM Research, Northeastern University, UT Austin, and the University of Minnesota. Thank you very much for watching this video.